kicks right foot to centre foot, and Brad Davis again leads out, takes a mark. He plays on, goes into Wiggins. Wiggins with a little kick to Ford, looking for a target, finds his target there for the Tasmanians. In uh, that was Scott Doreen who went moves forward, comes in, and have a look at this guy, <laughs> Coppy. Who's that? Big. Paul Deck, and that's very nicely done as the Victorians strike to settle. I noticed uh, already, Stoney, the Victorians are getting a lot of players out on their own. I, I reckon it was one of the worst uh, stands to watch footy because the sun was always in your eyes, but that's where all the Dow and North Hobart supporters were. As tell you what, Kevin Caton. Kevin Caton has leaned back on that one and he's kicked that one from way downtown and put it through for the first big one of the day, a blazon in the dull overcast conditions, two behinds to Victoria. One, two, eight. Oh, back in that 1990, Gale was just awesome in that game, as I recall. His locks was a little bit longer, but I tell you what, Michael Gale, he looks pretty fit to me, Stoney. Shane Stevenson gets the ball. He lines up for goal. I think they're through. Hoppy, he's got the first major. Yes, we certainly will. Of course, we saw Fev down in the change room, so he was trying to give a little bit of advice as Wanganeen just slips in there. And what about the pedigree of this man, Stoney? He's done it all, you know, he's played, uh, he's got the medals around his neck for uh, best on grounds, he's got Brownlow medals, he's done the lot as Wanganeen lines this one up, and I tell you what, that is a beautiful looking kick. I think we'll get the all clear, and it certainly is, that's a lovely shot on goal for the Victorians, and Gavin Wanganeen slips through the second goal for the big V, Fletcher. Now driving that ball back in, couldn't quite uh, duke it up. I think that was big Brad Davis again. Well, that was clever play by Stevens. Gets it out towards Robinson, I think that is, isn't it, uh, Stoney? And Robinson driving it round. The man for hire, Russell Robinson. And big Fev just kicked out a lazy 18 and sort of <laughs> counted them off for him. He, the poor fullback had to take his shoes and socks off to count them all as big Trent Bartlett. Is he up for a top? He's oh. going to line this big long one up. It's oh, oh. there you go! <laughs> Have a look at the mark there! Beautiful work! Doesn't he love a fly? <laughs> he started from the highway and ran in and got the ride. The funny thing about that was Ange Christie was standing behind him, right? Was clapping him as he was. That was a, <laughs> <laughs> that's a fair mark. That's a great way by Russell. And Tasmanians, he got drafted off a mark like that many moons ago. He goes and kicks a goal. Fantastic work. That's. I think that's exactly how it worked. Wasn't it on the almost footy legends? Yeah. And uh, just trying to settle the game down a little bit as Tasmania have got... Oh, the big bulls come out off the chest and taken a great mark. I thought it nearly knocked him back towards the goal square, but he was good enough to go back, showing great dexterity there. And Chuggy's come out for uh, Tasmania. He was a tough, How many tough chugs man. are there? Is there about 15 chugs in Tasmania? This is Tasmania, son. <laughs> We're all related and they've all got the same surname somewhere down in our lineage. Oh, he's showing a clean pad. Oh, the crowd oh, falls and Demetina strong through the core like your Chris Judge of the world, Stoney. That's what you want. Correct. As the ball comes to the Victorians, comes out to the Victorian who has a shot at goal. Shane Furl picks that ball up and I think he might have slopped that one through and uh, Luff uh, is going to relieve the yeah, pressure. I was going to say is Paul Atkins gets the footy. That was Paul, no doubt about that. It certainly that was, was Paul. Along the Wiggins, Wiggins gets it in fight and Craig Spider. He's going to go for the handball out to Shane. He's a dangerous man, Shane Stevenson. He on that left foot comes in. The umpire doesn't even move. Beautiful kick. He does not move. Puts up the calicos, Hoppy for six points. And uh, that's a goal of the, uh, the Taswegians, Hop. Great teamwork now. But Tasmania are going to do the mopping up. Oh, you're going to be caught. Smith comes out, lays the tackle. That's what you want your supporters to be decked out like, Stoney. Yeah. Bring it back as uh, they're fighting for the ball, as Michael Gale couldn't quite uh, bring that one out. But Victoria, through the agency of Central, picks it up. But he runs into a, a sea of green as that proud Guernsey. I put it to you, Stoney, that is one of, if not the best, a Guernsey you will ever see. You know you're playing against a fearsome player when they put the map on your chest. Yeah, I, actually, I don't mind a map on my chest either at times, but that's not today, Hoff. Demetina now comes towards Smith. He's in a little bit of trouble, so decides to get out quickly to Baker. Baker, tell you what, his hands are in tremendous form. <laughs> yeah, <bro. laughs> Dermot Brown's got the footy. He goes in forward, looks for, goes to his teammate. Oh, up oh. high, Andy Goodwin. What a great mark. Uh, the big man there in Goodman who couldn't quite bring it in. That's dangerous play. Uh, now that was Wooldridge who butters up, picks it up, gets it out towards Atkins. Oh, that wasn't the smartest play. Comes out towards Baldwin, gets it into Big Bull Baker. And he's 
barreled it through for a goal. Find his teammate there, Russell Robinson. He gets the ball on centre wing. He's a long way from goal, Russell Robinson. Hands it back to Craig Carter. On to Adrian Fletcher. This will go somewhere. Yes, it does. And a great lead and coming out <laughs> is your man, Hoppy. Your man, Paul. Paul the Dak. Dominator, Dak. He's got the ball at 40 minutes. He handballs the ball off to Spider Carter. Spider Carter can't, wouldn't kick a goal. Shane Stevenson gets the ball back. He goes to Robbo. Russell Robinson lines him up and goes bang. And the umpire goes, set six points to Calico's. And it's a goal of the Tasmanian's hobby. Look at Knocker down here. There's Knocker Knowles. He's taken over from Hudson. He said, move aside, Hutto. You might have kicked 150 goals in a season, but I've written the number one hit outside Coles on a Saturday night. <laughs> As Fletcher gets the ball. <laughs> Wanganeen in the middle of the ground. He goes up towards centre half forward, coming out and taking a nice mark. Nearly no play on his young by Joel Smith. Paul Atkins puts it. Oh, putting your head down <laughs> and trying to barge his way through. Or throw the ball. Play on says the umpire as it comes out to Waldridge again. He's been sensational. Is that what they call him, Bull Baker? Yeah. <laughs> <It> was <laughs> he was like, it was like the. The red flag was in front of him. He was getting the heads. And I tell you what, it's kicked back for a goal, I think. Well, was mark. that Smith? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a mark on the line to Smith. He wants the mark. <laughs> well, I tell you what, it was Joel Smith who might have kicked it. I, I, I think Smith kicked the goal, no matter <laughs> yeah, who kicked the goal. A, he's a great player, Corey McGrath. Played some good VFL footy and VFL, day, VFL footy in his time after his Carlton days and uh, was a premiership player. Oh, oh, look at that mark from Wigan. I'll tell you what, Duffy would have got that one. That was super. <laughs> I'll turn it up. Of course, they've got the big Greek festival on down here in uh, Hobart this weekend, and Ange might oh, sit down there. Oh, I saw, I saw an injury then. What's happened, oh, Stoney? No, no, I thought I'd seen a uh, player in Andy Gowan do a thigh, but he uh, seems to be OK. It, it marched through it. Now is an opportunity for uh, Victoria. I think that might have been Hill, was it? Hang on. What's happened? It's either a goal or a mark. It's a goal. All clear. They need a few interchange players, Stoney. Let's face it, uh, a few rotations. Is that the modern day vernacular? It is. Back when a lot of these uh, old boys would have been 19th and 20th. As Wiggins picks that ball up, and he's driving Tasmania forward, and they need a mark. Oh, and Ryan. I think they've absolutely got one here for the man mountain, the strength of Chrissy Ryan. And I noticed his hair's gone back to its natural colour. Uh, when he was playing for the Maggies, it had a little bit of that blonde tinge. Comes out towards Stevenson oh, on that mercurial, beautiful left foot. It's a long time ago. I remember when Bull was playing, actually. Playance is the umpire. We got to Gale. Gale's, he'll uh, bounce it once. And who's, oh, Favala. Favala's come on. The ground. <laughs> This must be a goal from Russell Robinson. OK, so Robinson steady over a few steps, goes back, and I think he has certainly kicked it. That is his fourth goal. Oh, and he's well tackled there by uh, Probert. Wasn't going to let the big V out. Come to Ravina over to Fletcher, sold the dummy, goes in, Bud out. But he's actually going to do the dummy on himself. That was nicely played. Gets it out to Atkins, and here comes Cole. Cole gets it across to Wiggins. He gets the handball back to Davies. Back to Wiggins, and it is absolutely champagne football. Look who's got the ball. Look who's got the footy. Russell Robinson is left. No one went near him, Stoney. He's got Why would you go near a man who's got five goals? <laughs> you, I know, you know he's going to get the footy. So he's going to line up for number six as Robinson's going his back. It's nice and steady and accurate, I think, in this particular occasion. And there's another goal for Tasmania. It's born to born, and now there's an opportunity that the handball comes over the top. Couldn't quite there. Stevenson picks it up, and that's a magnificent tackle there, Stoney. <laughs> he has, actually. That's very good. Good calculations there. OK, so Tasmania now defending stoutly as Probert kicks it in towards the big man. When in doubt, go for the big unit. But he's uh, fallen on all fours. Brady Davis on that particular occasion. It comes in to the five-times day, five-time night premiership player, <laughs> Dermot Brereton. And he knows how to kick a goal, Stoney. Now, now, Hop, he's been in the back line most of the game. and He's put himself forward now. And could he be the star of the show? He would love it nothing more than kicking a goal to put the Vicks in front right now. That traditional little oh. skip. Oh, he's gone for the short pass. <laughs> Was that a short pass, do you think, Stoney? <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting a long way away from the great man. And there's no way known he would have done that on purpose, no, surely. Not at all. I think he would have gone for a goal. <laughs> if power goes, doesn't it? We can edit that one, can't we, Duff? <laughs>
We can just edit that piece out. Dermy, I'm on your side. They've had many opportunities. Well, it was a close game back in 1990. It was a big, oh. close one. They came from behind last year. And can the big V turn the tables? It comes out now to Hill. He throws the dummy. Balks one way, then the other. Oh, they can raffle it now. It's all big V. Comes out towards Doc Wilden. Picks it up. Goes the short one towards Burton. But Chug chips in and takes a very timely mark for Tasmania Stoney. Yeah, Chug gets a ball out to halfback flank to Arena. On his trusty left foot, no, he goes for a handball out wide to Wiggins. Wiggins goes in board, picks up his teammate there in Doreen. Doreen handballs the ball back, back to Trevina. Trevina will go back at a look away handball to Simon Wiggins. Wiggins on half forward flank, he's looking up, looking for a lead and an option. He goes in short and finds Simon Atkins. Simon Atkins about 45 metres out from goal to the play, to the uh, the the Napier Street end, or what does that end up there? The ball goes out of bounds. What is that end up there? Oh, the Ride Street. The Ride Street end, that's the one I wanted to find out. And it's deep into attack. <laughs> and uh, Tasmania just want to sort of milk the clock down here, uh, Stoney. No time on. No time on at all. It's towards their goal, and that's good play by the big man. Here's a chance. Look at the intensity pick up. It's Smith. Picks it up for the big V. Gets it out towards Dermy. He knows he's got to play on. This time he puts a lovely kick in. Oh, going back, back. I think that was Bourne who got a Darryl. fingertip just in time. Otherwise, Luff would have been away. Comes out towards Gale, towards Atkin. Atkin on four to Fletcher. Gets it back out again. And the intensity has certainly lift up as Gale handballs it back now. Long kick by Noel Bourne. Up they go. Couldn't quite bring it in. Comes out towards Wiggins. Wiggins slams it forward. And I think he might have put it through. He has. Great goal to the map of Tasmania, Stoney. That might be the sealer. Yeah, I think that is the sealer. Simon, it took Simon Wiggins and Tasmania. Victoria had a lot of opportunities to kick goals early in this game, but look at the scoreboard. 10-11-71. 46 seconds to go. Victoria, 17-18-60. So 11 points up, and Tasmania are going to take this game. And uh, it's been a great game of football. Played in great spirit. Relive the rivalry. We'll bring it on next year, and let's hope we can get, you know, some more players to come and play this great game. Certainly is. As the ball goes up, the big V, while there's uh, seconds on the clock, there's life in these old dogs yet. As Demetina barrels it forward. Big opportunity. Chugs under enormous pressure. A snap towards goal by Andrew McLean, but on this particular occasion, through for the minor score. No, beg your pardons. When they went out, there was a bit of a laugh and a bit of a smirk, shook hands and said, good luck, old timer. And then all of a sudden, when there's only minutes to go, it's any man to try and win this game, Stoney. We knew that that would be the there case. Is. As the siren's gone, and Tasmania have proved to be the victors. 10-11-71 to Victoria. 7-19-61, Stoney. Now, the game's done and dusted. How does the body feel? Yeah, I didn't do too much. <laughs> I got one kick, one mark, and bar barreled over by Dermot, so that's but something that, to tell that, the kids. I was going to say, that's Isn't something it, to no? tell the kids. You got me there. No, no, sorry, nothing. So tell me, when you went out there and you shook hands and you looked your opponent in the eye, was it, was it a feeling of, this is all a bit of fun, it's all going quite well? It was until you saw Dermot's eyes. <laughs> but what about in that last quarter? To me, up there commentating, it looked to me like the intensity sort of lifted yeah, somewhat. Yeah, definitely, like Cutto's speech at three-quarter time was inspirational. Kick it long and kick goals. So, Well, it's a nice game and simple plan. game yeah. plan, that's all. Yeah, don't kick short, kick long. So if next year it's on again and the phone call comes through, can we count on your appearance? Oh, it'd be crazy not to. It's a great day. Well, run by yourselves with the, the video right through to Wigo and everyone. It's humbling to be a part of it and a, uh, a place that I always hold close to my heart. Oh, very well done, part of no the victorious, a relive of the rivalry, a winning Tasmanian Beautiful. team. Cheers. Thank Thanks, you. Scott. <laughs> well, Tasmania's come away with a great victory and one of the main prime movers for the Tasmanian team was this man here, oh. big Trent Bartlett. Bart, how'd you pull up? Well, I've done my quarter in the second <laughs> quarter and I've hurt my plantar fascia training a week before that, so, yeah, no, terrific. <laughs> no, it was great fun. It was really good. It's good to play. Lots of old teammates and lots of guys you played against and a few others, so yeah, a great time out there. Well, as a, ob observing the game, it seemed to be played in a really good spirit, but when it got close towards the last quarter, I had wondered if some steely determined came out and you thought, well, I actually want to get over the line. There's always that bit of fun until the uh, until right to the very end when, there's a, uh, when the game's on the line and it comes out, definitely. But uh, it's played in good spirit. 
No, it's, uh, and that's what's about. It's about enjoying having some fun, having a kick, and that certainly was done that. But, yeah, that last five minutes has certainly got tight. <laughs> ah, terrific, and well done, and congratulations to the Tasmanian team. Thank you. One of the main reasons why Tasmania was good enough to get up was this man here, St. Stevenson, beautiful foot skills, and you've lost nothing. How was the game? Uh, look, I really enjoyed it. It was, it was really good fun, and obviously to catch up with guys that you play with was terrific, but uh, I wouldn't say some of the foot skills were silky for the whole day. I turned it over in the middle a few times, and Adrian Fletcher gave me a few dirty looks. So, um, anyway, it was really good fun, mate. What I uh, observed uh, sitting up in the commentary box that you don't lose skills. There were certain people who do things correctly and it was shown all through the game and it was a really good example of football. It was fantastic. Oh, yeah, I think you're right. I think you know guys like um, you know Adrian Fletcher and Paul Dimitrino, these guys that have played on board at the AFL, you, you don't lose that touch. Obviously the game's a little bit slower so it gives you enough time to, to use the footy but uh, you know it was great to see all the guys you know come along and play for a really good cause and I think that's the most important thing yeah it certainly was but uh, and we also sort of laughed in one way it's all a bit of frivolity and then toward the end you glance up at the scoreboard it's really close surely the competitive juices <laughs> must have come out then, uh, we were commenting uh, <laughs> commenting after the game with a couple of guys you know white line fever it doesn't matter how old you are if uh, there's a game to be won you'll put your body on the line and that's what it came down to and um, it was terrific the way that everyone went in that last bit, you know, it really showed that everyone's commitment to put on a good show and, um, you know, at the end of the day, Tassie won, so it was even better. A very good result and congratulations to you. Beautiful, thank you. Ta well, Peter, you've been involved in some great AFL moments. Uh, surely that's one of your greatest uh, moments indeed there. <laughs> yeah, it, it was great. Yeah, I was under a bit of, bit of pressure, of course. Uh, you know, the fact that uh, Tassie won last year, and Andy Bennett was the coach last year, and then he, he was my assistant coach today. So I said to the players before the game, yeah, we, we've got to win this, because it's not going to look too good on my record if we don't. And I noticed at the end you had another assistant coach. He seemed to be looking over your shoulder. Knocker Knowles, did he give you a little bit of advice? Well, well I won't say that Knocker wasn't a great assistant, but I won't say he was either. So. <laughs> but uh, no, it was, he was terrific old Knocker. He's, it I've was, known him for a long time. It, it was played in such good spirit. Yeah. And the other thing we noticed was toward the end, a little bit of frivolity went out the window because all of a sudden there was actually a game of football on the line and Tasmania right. really showed their, their stood up and, and won. So it was yeah. fantastic. Yeah, well, we were 13 points down, I think, at three-quarter time. And um, we, we did a, made a couple of suggestions at three-quarter time and they paid off. And uh, But, I, yeah, I mean... Uh, I think when you play footy as long as all these blokes happen, as long as Andy and myself have, you um, you can't help yourself. The, the, the competitive <laughs> spirit gets in there somewhere. Now, are you saying you can't help yourself? Would there be any chance that the old Pumas could be pulled on for next season? Uh, Buckley's a nun. <laughs> I reckon it, if I try to kick a football now, I reckon my leg would fall off. <laughs> <laughs> We've got very fond memories of you kicking many a goal, yeah. and it's fantastic that you've come back to coach the team today, yeah. and congratulations. Thank you. I, I had a ball. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Well, the rivalry was relived out there with Tasmania coming away with a, just a victory over the Big V, and one of the stars of the game, Dermot Brereton. Dermot, how did you pull up? Uh, what game are you at? <laughs> uh, no, I pulled up rather sore. Every time I play in these, I go, geez, I'm feeling sore, but today I just felt old. <laughs> I, I thought it was fantastic to watch because although the bodies might be older, the, the way that people go about it with the skill, taking the time over the ball, I think there's a few lessons out for the kiddies yeah. to watch that everyone still does the right thing. Took a lot of time over the ball in the last shot at goal. <laughs> and took a sand wedge, <laughs> took a divot about 18 inches long. That's called fatigue. <laughs> no, well, it's played in a great spirit. I felt sorry for Spider. I went to soccer one off the ground and he put his hand across, hit the middle of my leg and compound fractured his, his thumb. So he's going to be in a bit of, bit of strife, I'd say, for a few weeks, about six weeks that'll take uh, before it heals up. So that was a, a casualty, a good bloke. Yeah, yeah so no. unfortunate, that one. No, well, it was a really good day, great concept, and uh, Wigo's put it together for, for all the right reasons and the right causes, and I guess for the Tasmanian public, getting people of the ilk of your very good self coming across, it makes it for a great day of football. So it, we thank you very much for that. My pleasure, <laughs> and it's great to uh, yeah, come down here and do that for, for the charities involved. So, yeah, really enjoy the, the time spent down here, and great bunch of guys. A lot of these blokes I've played, uh, you know, Terry and that, we played 
state of origin football together. So it's, it's a walk down memory lane for us as well, you know. So yeah. we really enjoy it. So we hope that comes through to the to the people who pay their donation to get in and watch the game. So next year, bigger and better. Hopefully more people come along. Got a good crowd today, given the uh, the elements. Um, hopefully next year come along and support and do your bit for the charity and come and watch a couple of old hackers <laughs> kick it around. Thanks, Dermot. Thanks, Andrew. <laughs> Well, as we wrap this great day up, relive the rivalry, Stoney. It's been a magnificent day, and you can see from behind us the frivolity and uh, all the camaraderies come out, and of course the right result with Tasmania, victors over the Big V. I tell you what, Hop, you can see in that last quarter that Victoria really, Tasmania actually took it to Victoria. Victoria looked at, had a lot of chop chances at goal, but Tassie really took it to them and really wanted to win the game. You look in the rooms after, after the game here, and it's a, what it's all about. Your former players get together, their mates get together, uh, they play for a really good cause today, a lot of couple of charities, really good charities, but a really good concept and let's hope we can get really the rivalry number three, four, five and six and get more players that want to be competitive and enjoy this great game. Yeah, just a, a little bit of a damp with the weather that probably kept a few people away, but no doubt about it, it'll be back next year bigger and better than ever and there's only one thing that you and I can do is the man from Victoria and this man from Tasmania is the sponsors one of them look at this guy. our very dear friends from this. Cascade let's have one of those little beverages and we hope you've enjoyed relive the rivalry for 2013 <laughs>